Everyone, I want to just talk about winter protection for a moment. We're not going to go into crazy detail. We're not even going to do the act of the winter protection for these fig trees. Um, we'll do that later in the season. I kind of just want to give you guys an update, uh, as much information now as possible, because I know I'm going to start getting some questions. What you see here is a bed of newly rooted fig cuttings. We either rooted them indoors or we rooted them in the ground. We just stuck the cutting in the ground. And across the board, a lot of these will probably not survive the winter. And the large majority is that even if you were to plant, let's say a, a five gallon size tree, a 10 gallon size tree, maybe it's three or four years old. The first year that these trees are in the ground, they will almost always, I mean, it's like 99% of the time, here in my climate, they will die back to the ground meaning that they'll get killed by the frost, by the cold. They'll get killed all the way to the ground and have to re-sprout. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think it's actually a good thing because it's a form of rejuvenation pruning in that this is a tree right here that's two years old at this point. And you can see the different coloration in the wood. This is two-year-old growth now, and this is all the new, year old, the new growth right here that's going to be one-year-old uh, very soon. This two-year-old growth is almost always going to die. I don't know why that is. It doesn't make sense to me. But it, it seems to be that these trees need some time to adapt, to really dig themselves in. But what's good is that even if this tree were to die all the way down to this point right here, I mean, that's how extreme it is. They'll get killed all the way down to the soil. And then they'll have to re-sprout for somewhere lower. It's okay because this is a form of rejuvenation pruning as I've mentioned to you guys in other videos. That rejuvenation pruning encourages this tree to send out new, healthy, vigorous shoots. You can see, look how healthy the, the growth is down here. How vigorous it looks. This one's coming actually from below, almost below the soil. So this is the kind of thing that you even want, and this will reset the tree, get it out of its tree form. We don't want a tree form here in the ground in a colder climate. We'd rather have a, a tree that's as a bush. We wanna limit the number of canes to five or six. And from there, I think it's worth protecting. Um, so what my method is, if, if this tree is gonna die all the way down to the base anyway, 99% of the time, why not just cut them down at the base? Why not just ignore that whole entire thing that's gonna happen? I can preserve that wood, do whatever I want with it. I can even put it in the fridge and then get it through the winter time and, and stick it in the ground, create myself new trees. Or, um, or I can just simply protect it after I do that, right? So I take the cutting and then I throw something over the bottom of the, the tree. And I think this is a good way of doing it. I think if I were to cut this tree down to about a foot, I can easily protect a foot of growth, right? Something that's a foot high off the ground. But if I have so many trees, look, I had these trees spaced two feet apart. There's another one, there's another one, another one, two feet apart this way, this way, this way, every which way. I think it makes a lot of sense to be doing it like this, personally. So I can protect them in a, a mass form of protection by putting them so close together in such a high density and cutting them all back to about a six inches to a foot off the ground, I can really just lay something over this whole area that's insulative. The ground is very warm. It's a heat source. So in the wintertime, if I can just protect my heat source and insulate that, I can get my trees here through the wintertime, no problem. It's the same thing with a house or a greenhouse. You have a heater in the greenhouse, a heat source, this thin layer of plastic here isn't going to do crap. I need to protect this. I need to insulate this. If I don't, all the air escapes out from the top. All that hot air rises. So it's really important um, if you're doing it like this, we got to cover the soil. And my main thing that I'm going to be using is just a tarp. It's uh, the thickest tarp I could find. It's the biggest tarp I could find for an affordable price. I mean, that's really it that's all you want I figured it uh, I figured it out that it's gonna be six foot um, across but actually it's 12 feet across so I'm gonna double layer 
the tarp. I'm going to fold the tarp in half lengthwise, like a hot dog style. Fold that in half. Now I got it six feet across. If you measure this tree here to this row, so from this row here to this row on the side, that's about six feet. So I cover all the trees lengthwise. It's 25 feet length, um, lengthwise, I should say. So that way I've got myself tons of room in here. And in between the two layers of the tarp, because I'm gonna double them, right? I'm gonna fold them on top of each other. In between, I can use any sort of insulation I want. I have tons of straw. Thanks to my buddy Simon, he, he actually dropped off a few bales. Um, I also have some blankets. I have some insulation that you use for like your house. And you really just throw that in, in between the two layers put stones around the tarp so it doesn't blow away, and you're golden. You're gonna get your trees through the winter time. The only issue you got to worry about now is rodents and things getting underneath the tarp and eating at this bark, eating at the wood. Um, so that's definitely a big concern. Maybe some mouse traps, maybe some poison, maybe get yourself a cat. The other method here, what you can do of protection and this is not the one that I recommend, but I know plenty of people have great success. You've got yourself a tree here. We cut it down to the base the prior year. It branched out. We have four or five main trunks right here. Actually, we had six and I air layered off two. And that one still has to come off. So we really have four trunks. What I can do is bring all four of these trunks together, tie them up so that they're almost like one trunk. Tie them up and then wrap that thing with a tarp, some burlap. Um, I have to wait though. I have to wait for all of this. Every single method of protection that I'm mentioning right now, we have to wait till these trees are dormant. That's priority number one. If these trees aren't dormant, it's not a dry day. Everything's wet outside. Maybe the ground's even wet. Maybe there's some leaf matter, some humidity that's getting trapped in that tarp underneath along these trees. We're gonna create too much moisture underneath these trees and around these trees and that's going to give ourselves mold and rot and we're going to uncover our trees in, in March and we're going to be screwed. So that's not something you really, you really want to do. You want to wait and the reason again I'm doing this now is because I know I'm going to get questions very soon. We don't want to be doing this until really December 1st. We want everything in this area to go completely dormant gets hit with two to three frosts. We don't have to rush this, guys. We wanna keep these trees that are gonna, you know, keep them away from a really extreme cold, like 15 degrees or lower is really extreme. You wanna throw something over top of them on a day like, on a night like that, as an example. But you really just want these things to go very naturally, slowly dormant. Um, lose all the leaves, clear all the leaves out of here. Don't even use leaves. Some other people, what they do is, after we wrap, like you can wrap this up with a tarp. Uh, you can, again, wrap it with burlap, string the whole thing up so it's one single trunk. And then you could throw a trash can over top of it. There's so many methods. The, the big thing here, and the reason I don't like to do this method of wrapping these things um, is because you can trap that humidity in there and you can unwrap your tree and you get all that mold. It was a trick to this. If you trap any moisture in here, you're gonna regret it. And if, but here's the other thing. If you get any moisture inside, you're also gonna regret it. You don't want any moisture going in and you don't want any moisture being trapped in. It's really difficult and it kind of is a little, it's a little tough to like kind of grasp, I guess, initially. Uh, but that's the key of doing this successfully and really waiting, picking the right day. Uh, the second and third method you could do, and I've done this in the past with limited success, is that you come in here, get yourself chicken wire. I have a bunch of chicken wire. Maybe I'll show it to you guys. Let me grab it real quick. My wire is stuck here, guys. Sorry. All right. So you got ourselves chicken wire. On the chicken wire is these you know, you basically entangle in a stake throughout the chicken wire. And this creates a chicken wire cage wrapped around the tree. We did this about two or three years ago. I stopped doing it simply because we had this cage, you fill in the cage with all kinds of mulch. You could do wood chips, straw, leaves, 
dry leaves, dry material is definitely better. Because again, if you have too much moisture throughout the winter time, just like if you were to pile up mulch too much around the base of your tree, that's why a lot of tree guys and people don't recommend this. If you come in here and you pile up too much of this stuff around the base, you're gonna have too much moisture around the bark and it's gonna rot that bark. It's the same thing with figs and it happens all the time with figs. It's almost a bit easier, I think, with figs than maybe some other species of trees. So what I'd recommend here, if you're gonna do this, fill it in with just leaves. Don't use straw, I think straw is a big no-no. Um, I wouldn't even use wood chips, unless you can get really big wood chips, maybe like big, uh, big pieces, big pieces of bark, you know, like those big bark nuggets at Home Depot. Otherwise, leaves is probably your best bet. Something light and airy. It's gonna have a lot of airflow, but it's also gonna be insulative. And that's what you wanna do. You know, those are the three main methods here of protection. We'll show you guys a couple of them uh, this season coming up in, in December when I actually do this myself. So, all right, guys. We'll talk to you soon, all right? Take care. See you for tomorrow's video. Hope this helped.